ಹಾಗಾದ್ರೆ Bruce? Why, Mo? I know it's been about a week since we last talked, maybe even slightly yes. more. Yeah, give or take. Yeah, uh, but uh, I want to, if you don't mind, I'd love to ask you. Uh, I know I put you on the spot, and I apologize okay, go for ahead. that. Go ahead. But can you tell I, I, me? I'm tough. I can take it. Can you tell me if this is the first podcast since the last podcast? Oh, let, let me check my files and see. We might have to get you a booster now. Uh, according to page 633, paragraph two, yes. Okay. That's good to know. Yeah. Actually, I don't even really know why we need to know it, but it makes me feel like we're. It makes you feel like you're in control. Well, it makes me feel like we actually are like have some remote idea of what we're doing. Oh, really? Yeah. It makes me that feel happen? that way. It how, makes how did me... that happen? Well, it makes me feel that way. I didn't say. Oh, feel that way. Okay. Yeah. It's, it's the, it's the overall general impression and feeling. Yeah. So, you know what? Yeah, I got you. No, Wait. what? Um, don't get too far from your microphone. That's what we're going to talk. I'm, about. I'm, I got it stuck right in my face. All right. All right. So, uh, I'll you know, turn the gain up. Is that better? It is a little better. Okay, I've got the gain on full now, so I'll turn it down. Turn works. it down a smidge. Just a titch? Yeah. How about that? Not too far. Yeah, I'll so anyways, it. our buddy uh you know the you know uh Scott the Table Master. Yes, Scott the Table Master, aka Duke Lister. Yeah, that guy. Yeah. Man about town, jack of all trades. Yes. Uh, super talented modeler. Super talented modeler. Super talented car restorer. Oh yeah. Not, not uh, not necessarily somebody that makes the best choices about who can drive his bus. Yeah, well, you know, it's a learning experience for all of us, and now he knows. Yeah, I guess so, yeah. That's one way you he know, can look I, at I, it. If you hadn't backed it into his garage, he wouldn't have never known you can't drive a bus. <laughs> that's right. I can, you know, hey, I can drive it. I just needed a little bit. I just was like. You need uh, a little more guidance putting it into the well, garage. Well, it's my first. The garage. Well, the thing of it is, I have plenty of experience from the old days of driving tractor trailers and uh, yes. wheeling the, you know, the 43 foot trailer into the door. I have no problem right. with that, but a bus Plus has got the, the single axle and double axle and right? the double axle Louisville, the, the 10 tonner. Yeah. That was a lot of fun, but even the 10 tonner was not as long as the That's bus. The bus. Now, was the 10 tonner the one you took out the guard check with? Oh yeah. Cause it had a pretty oh, big beautiful. box on it. And yeah, it, it was beautiful. it was the one I did the most damage with. Perfect. Uh, it was the, the one I knocked. Perfect tool the, for the job. The perfect tool for the job. It was the one I knocked the fire escape off the building. Wow. The one I took wiped out the guard shack. Beautiful. Uh, uh, and, and yet they still let you drive it. <laughs> yeah. Well, they were a little short-handed. Well, there you go. Yeah, quit wrecking the equipment. <laughs> Well, actually, you probably weren't wrecking the equipment. You're wrecking everything else. Yeah, I was wrecking everything else. It was pretty can, sturdy. Can you still drive it? Oh, yeah, I can still drive. It's got a bit of hold box. Fine, we can fix that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, when I wiped out the guard check, is, I, is that when is that the one you took the door off the caddy with too? Uh no, that was Shotgun Harold that did that. Oh, Shotgun Harold. I was following him. Oh, you were following Shotgun. And it was a uh, old Delta eighty eight. Oh, Delta eighty eight. Those yeah. are big boats. Yeah, because he was uh, in a hurry to get back to the the. The terminal. Right. And uh, he, he was a bit of a highlight reel, more than me. Okay. And uh, and Harold was more, uh, if he saw the door open, it was kind of like the thing in Smokey and the Bandit. Like, he probably could have avoided the door. Right. But the guy swung open this big door. We were going, uh, we're going along uh, Dundas Avenue, actually near the junction, uh, High, right. Bernard, High Bernard. High Bernard. Uh, uh, who hangs out in the junk? Yep, yeah, and and this guy swung open his uh, door on his Delta eighty eight. This is uh, you know nineteen seventy two or no nineteen seventy five. So it'd be like hitting a piece of armored plate. <laughs> yeah, and it was a pretty big door. Oh yeah, no kidding. And and Harold really saw no reason to slow down. Huh. <laughs> because as when we pulled both pulled over. Harold got out of the truck, and he, as I'm getting out of the truck, and I'm he, getting out of my truck, and he's getting out of uh, his, and uh, we start walking back. He said, "You see that?" He says, "I slice that clean that baby clean off." 
<laughs> put the evidence in the car. Yeah, I put the evidence in the car. Uh, I know I don't even remember what we were talking about. We were talking about. Oh yeah, the bus is lo- the bus has a longer, the bus, longer yeah. frame, longer solid yes. frame. So that's right. After this last little incident, I'm sure I will. This is what about forty three feet overall. Yeah, this thing is mass- massive. Yeah, they're they're big units. It's like driving a giant stick. It's like driving a baseball bat. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Anyways, uh, that's not why we're here. No. Uh, remember, uh, not so many months ago, we talked to a fellow named Brad Joseph. Yes. He lives in St. Louis. He lives in St. Louis. He's a hockey yes. fan. Yes. A, a, an avid hockey fan. An avid hockey fan. Yeah. And I wore my St. Louis Blues jersey. And, yes. And I haven't put a number on it yet, but I'm going to put Brett Hall on it. Number there 16. You go. N- nice call. And uh, anyways, he was uh, one of the fellas that was uh, in charge of running the St. Louis, the NMRA National Convention. And we are airing this towards the end of July, probably like around July. Let me let me take a stab at it on the calendar. I'm thinking this might come out on the 25th of so July. So a week or two before the convention then. Yeah. And so he's back to tell us all uh, what's happening and see if we can't encourage more people to come. Excellent. Uh, Brad, could you come on into the studio, please? Well, I, hang on a minute here. I'm I'm trying to craft an algorithm. <laughs> to confirm that the most recent podcast actually was the first since the previous one. Oh, okay. But I, I can't get I can't get it tied down quite yet. So yeah, well, see, yeah. This I'll, is, this I'll this is one of the this. things where pen and paper works better than trying to come up with something like that. I don't know. Well, Bruce. I'm I'm pretty good at algorithm. I tell you what, I crafted an algorithm that confirmed the St. Louis <laughs> Blues beat the Avalanche as many times as their opponent in the Stanley Cup Finals. Well, there you yeah, go. Yeah, be careful where you're going with this, Brad. Just well, I'm careful. just, it's just a fact. And, okay. and Lionel, I do have to say I'm a bit disappointed in the use of the term jersey. Uh, most true hockey enthusiasts and, and fans of the culture of the sport refer to it as a sweater. Oh, just get Ralph all riled up. Yeah, don't get Ralphie boy riled up. He's a jersey guy. <laughs> well, you uh, know, they got, they got the devils up there in that state, so that's okay, I guess. Um... St. Louis is a great hockey town, isn't it? St. Louis oh, yeah. is a great hockey town, man. It is a great hockey town. Everybody was really excited to see Pat Maroon in the finals again, and they were pulling for him to win. And when he made his crass comment about Stan Kroenke, who used to own the Rams and moved them out of St. Louis, everybody in St. Louis hates Stan Kroenke. So that made the uh, Lightning the de facto favorite. But it wasn't to be. It wasn't no, to be. Pretty hard to have a three-peat. Uh, I'm surprised they pulled off two, quite frankly. I think it's pretty hard to do two. Yeah. And and unfortunately for them, the two that they pulled off were during COVID. So there will always be a little, people will always be going, well, they weren't real staying in the Cubs. Yeah. yeah. Years from now, there'll be a debate about that, like uh, the whole baseball thing and the home runs and the shortened season and everything. But that's yeah. what we all like to talk about, isn't exactly. it? Exactly. Yeah. And, and years from now, long after Bruce and I are gone, that the people will be talking about, the Leafs winning uh, three Stanley Cups in five years. There you go. They did that once, you're telling me? Is that they what you're saying? They did that once, but they'll be doing it again. Yeah. Uh, that remains to be seen. Well, long after we're all gone. <laughs> uh, more, more than likely true. <laughs> I'm yes, actually indeed. starting to get annoyed about that because I promised my son. I've been taking him to Leaf games since he was like five. And I promised him when he was like 10 or 12 I said, I absolutely promise you, when the Leafs win the Stanley Cup, we are going to be there. And I thought, you know, okay, you know, back then, you know, this is like we're going back 30 years ago. And I'm thinking, yeah, okay, I can see that. I'll start putting a couple of bucks aside and be prepared. Hopefully the final game will be in Carolina and it only cost me a couple hundred dollars. But, uh, and I mean, we're not even getting a sniff here. No. <laughs> well, you know, boy, it's, it's a tough, it's a tough, tough, tough postseason to go deep in. My God, it's so brutal. And if, uh, you know, if you got an injury or two to to key players, you're screwed, man. That's just all there is to it because it requires all hands on deck and a couple of uh, the, of the what do they call them, the black aces guys that can step in if somebody does get hurt. And, uh, you know, a lot of people forget the Blues didn't have Tory Krug, who was their uh, the quarterback on the power play. And if the Blues would have gotten one or two more goals in that series, they might have beat the Avalanche. The Avalanche are a tough club, though, and they did not have much in the way of injury issues. They did lose Kadri because the suspension thing, and they had a couple, but they got into the they got late into the round with Edmonton before they really had anybody seriously hurt. 
Yeah, but we're talking about the Leafs, so really any well, kind, any I, kind of yeah. yeah. You, yeah. you never know with the Leafs. It is. Uh, <laughs> I, I thought. I, I really I thought this year was going to be. I, I thought they were going to win this year. I really did. But you know, nobody can predict it. There's just so much, so much uh, mental turpitude involved in that sport compared to other ones. I think. Uh, and, uh, I could have. I could have told you well way back. The only thing that uh, made me excited this year was uh, Austin Matthews. Obviously, grew into being very, uh, very much of a man, and uh, he was leading the team. In every in every category, he was a leader in grit. He was a leader in goals. He was a leader in everything. We need somebody to follow him a little bit closer. Yeah, uh, pay a little bit more attention to him. That's that's a very important thing. All right, so uh, hey, that was we... a good chat. That was excellent. I enjoyed that though. Okay, yeah. were some of the chats we had on the last interview not so good? Yeah, no, no, they were great. They were excellent. <laughs> but I just I love talking <laughs> hockey, and I love the. The whole culture and the nuances of the sport and everything, it's uh, second only to model trains. There you go. Uh, hockey is, uh, uh, it's interesting that it's uh, you're such an enthusiastic fan because, uh, you know, in Canada, it's kind of bred into you. And uh, I mean, I've been playing, I played since I was like four or three or whenever I could skate. So, I mean, it is yeah. a great game. It's a great game with a lot of history. People throwing, you know, you get a hat trick. People will throw their ex- their expensive hats on the ice without even thinking twice about it. Uh, oh, sure. Thanks to the Hamilton Mad Hatters. Yep, exactly. And a guy in Toronto on, I think, maybe Spadina or, or Queen Street that uh, made the, did the, did I'm, the deal. I'm thinking he was on Queen Spadina Street, I think. Somewhere. No, yeah. I think it was Queen Street. Was it Queen? Okay. I have a Mad Hatters it... uh, vintage sweater. There you go. Not an authentic one, a reproduction. Right. How about Springfield Indians? Nope. Now there's a here's a historic team, the Springfield Indians. Yes, uh, I do have my most exotic one is a Yaroslav locomotive sweater, um, purchased oh, nice. from a vendor in Red Square by my nephew, who married a girl from Russia, uh, and I wore it to the Pavel Dimitra <laughs> commemorative showing of the film which was hosted by St. Louis Blues at the Kiel Center, and Vladimir Tarasenko came up and patted me on the shoulder and gave me a hug. Wow. For wearing it. How about that? It had uh, Semyon Varlamov's number on it and name on the back, which was a few years before the horrible accident they had. Yep. But, uh, yeah, it was very cool. So we saw the documentary 38. It's premiere in St. Louis, and Pavel Dimitra is a big hero in St. Louis. Wow. Look at you go. You are like, you are like Mr. Hockey. You well, I don't my... know about that. There's only been one Mr. Hockey, as a matter of well, fact. Well, I know I, you should know who I that know was. That. I know that. I know that. Well, uh, I was using the term metaphorically. Well, I appreciate that. I, I consider that an honor. Yeah, exactly. Um, All right. So let's get down to some serious uh, some serious stuff here. How's this uh, NMRA National Convention going in St. Louis? Well, I got to tell you, Lionel, this, is gonna, this has shaped up to become a fantastic convention. We are going to have a blast and a great show, and uh, we'll get into this in a couple minutes. And I got to I got to tell you about some great news we just tied up today. Uh, depending on, I'm still confused about which day that's supposed to be the 25th of July or whatever. I don't know. But it's the day. Big it's, news to tell. It's the it's the day you're here. Yeah, I, I'm almost positive this is July the 25th. But uh, we are we are coming along very well. Our registrations have picked up very very nicely, considering all the headwinds we're against. Um, you know, gas prices are coming down a little bit. Uh, the weather's not so bad. Uh, the St. Louis Cardinals will be in town, although nobody really cares because they aren't playing particularly well right now. Yadier Molina will not be in town. He'll still be in Puerto Rico, I guess. I don't know. But um, we got we got a great show shaping up, and really looking forward to it. How do you uh, how do you say all those names? You're you're like a you're like a whiz at saying all the, he, all the... he's a, he's a he's a sports name linguist. I know well, he's a sports name linguist. I don't know about linguist. that, but I don't know about that. <laughs> um, My uh, girlfriend in eighth grade wrote a story for our eighth grade newspaper about why hockey players have such cool names, and and it just it always fascinated me. That's how she and I connected. Was talking about hockey and stuff. She was a hockey fan. Which was still a little bit rare in St. Louis when I was in eighth grade. Yeah, but and uh, sports fans and stuff. I just like you know, it's hard to beat. It's hard to beat a reference to Lubos Barchenko. <laughs> <laughs> sure. <laughs> you know, a lot of modelers, a lot of model rarers probably know who he is. No, yeah, you got me beat. Who is he? Oh come on. And Bruce, anybody? 
I have no idea. Just okay. go to the, go to the NHL NHL.com and look him up. All right. Can you give us a hint? He was a hockey player. Oh, okay. Any model yeah. and a model river? Not that I'm aware of. Oh, okay. Nope. So why are we talking about him? I don't know. You asked me about names or something. <laughs> so I just threw out a good one. Um, what's the actual uh, web URL for the Gateway to 2022? Oh, my goodness. I've been eat, sleeping, and breathing it for the past month about uh, gateway2022.org. And you know why it's ORG? Uh, not really. Why? Because you're organized. Oh, well, I, I, I think that's arguable. <laughs> but um, I thought you were going to give me some some wise information about the structure of the internet or something. No, no, no that's not going to happen. But so, uh, we, yeah, go ahead. So, so it's Sunday, August the seventh. Yep, yep. Till Saturday, August the thirteenth. Uh, uh, yep. And uh, your front page. I'm assuming I'm on your front page. It shows clinic room sponsors. Yep. And there's a, then below that, there's a video message from Michael Gross, who's your banquet speaker. Yep. And each registrant gets one free self-drive tour. Yeah, because that's what's that you guys are doing a little different this year. You guys got some self-drive, self-guided layout tours. Yes, we had the self-guided layout tours because we had a little uh, complication with uh, bus contracts and the like. So we've split them up a little bit. The bus companies, uh, you know, wanted uh, 100% money up front. Uh, non-refundable. So if we ran into cases where we had a few tours that weren't selling particularly well, and we did have a few, we had to cancel some because the investment, we couldn't take the chance of having to pay for the buses. And uh, on top of that, they changed their minimum hourly or their uh, minimum amount of hours, um, increased that by 50%. And uh, they worked with us very well to wait to the last partic- the last potential minute before we had to sign the contract. But yes, that's one of the reasons we went with some of the drive yourself tours. Also, they've been very, very successful at uh, narrow gauge conventions. If you ever go to those, I go to about uh, two out of three of those, two out of four maybe, and those work well. And St. Louis is a relatively compact city, easy to get around. So we thought that worked out well, and they've been a big hit. How many layouts do you think you have? Oh, my goodness. Individual layouts on the tours. We're probably in the neighborhood of 54, I think, right now. Okay. Um, And that's, uh, we got, uh, there's a couple layouts on the, Operations special interest group tour that aren't open on drive yourself tours. There's a couple on the LD SIG tours that aren't on the bus tours. So uh, they all overlap a little bit, but all told, I think we're about 54. Wow. And is the model railroading scene pretty popular in, in uh, St. Louis? Yeah. Yeah, it is. Um, it is the, the, there's some new layouts underway. There's some young blood getting in. There's some very, very good layouts in St. Louis, as I'm sure you're aware Eric Bruman, who was on the cover of the latest model railroader, uh, they don't get much, get much better than that. Gary Hoover is building his, it's either his fifth or his sixth layout, and it's uh, N and W Steam again. But this one, strangely enough, and I had an interesting conversation with Gary about this recently, it's freelanced. So he went from the last two being ultra prototypical, the Santa Fe and the previous N and W, to this one kind of being a freelanced N and W Steam in the fifties layout and most people don't do that they go the other way around you know okay bruce add him to the list that sounds like a good uh interview bruce 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 uh, i i i'm he's... currently muted my wife just walked in and the dogs are going <laughs> snake no he's he's looking up lubos Bartesco. yeah oh well, actually i was going to mention for those who don't know eric Bruman is famed for the uh the, the utah, utah belt. belt yeah exactly yep. we got to get him on the layout too so there's two oh, names yeah. right to add to the list yep yeah. there's two great okay. ones um, yeah. so how many of these tours are self-guided then? Oh, goodness. Well, just roughly. Yeah, you don't I'll have to... tell you. Well, well the, there, there's um, at least one free one with the registration. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. There's 13 self-guided tours. Yeah. Now, uh, you know, some of the layouts are only on one of them. Some are on three of them. It depends on what was available. Uh, I tell you another very cool layout uh, that I'm a little bit prejudiced in favor of, but my best friend, Steve Goring, who's been my train buddy for most of my life, his layout was just on the cover of Rare Model Craftsman. And he's got an extremely good, small Illinois Terminal Railroad layout. Okay. 
which is unique because the subject matter, it's unique about its prototypical fidelity. And it happens to be modeled around the town where I currently live, which is very cool. So uh, let this past month here, the cover stories on two of the magazines are on layouts that are on tour. Well, if I was going, uh, if I was going to take a self-guided tour, I'd take the Green Diamond one, which is from 5 p.m. to 9 p.m. on Monday, the August Green the Diamond. 8th. On August the 8th. Oh, man, there's a classic. There is a classic. The only thing, if you go on that tour, you got to bring a jacket or windbreaker because, uh, you know, 8,200 feet at Sherman Hill this time of year even gets chilly. <laughs> So after after this podcast, we're gonna and we're gonna talk mostly about the convention. After this podcast, you got to come back on and tell us all about your Union Pacific and Wyoming division. I'd love to. I'm a uh, Western history buff. I went to college in Laramie, Wyoming, because of my love of Western history. It was infused in me by my parents, who who took my family out west almost every year, and uh, went to Indian Wars sites and railroad sites and. I remember standing in the roundhouse in Cheyenne in 1964, staring up at the drivers of 844, thinking, man, this thing, this can't move. This thing's too big. It can't possibly move. And uh, one of my very first rail fan photographs, by the way, with the Instamatic my dad bought me in Jackson Hole, Wyoming in 1964, was of a three-unit big blow turbine sitting in Cheyenne. Wow. So, yeah, I go way back with uh, the Overland route. I love it. So, but when we have you back on to talk about your layout, we'll have to, I'd like you to be try to be a little bit more enthusiastic. Well, I'll try and fire <laughs> up the enthusiasm. I I, I got to mention a couple of these layouts real quick, if I may. Sure, go ahead. Don't, don't, and don't sure, rush. Certainly, let's plug away. Don't uh, uh, don't rush. Take your time. Pete Smith's the Loon Lake Railway Navigation Company, which is ten minutes down the road from my house, is an amazing layout. That guy is a craftsman like there are not many around today. Uh, it's a freelance kind of Pacific Northwest. Uh, logging railroad and there are loons there are loons in attendance both on the layout and every now and then in the layout room but <laughs> uh that's a fantastic one um man the um john peluso's frisco railroad is spectacular very unusual to see a frisco layout right um there's some great layouts in st louis and every one of these tours is very very worthwhile because there's some very very nice modelers here richard rand's uh, Mineral and South Fork Railway, Freelance Colorado Road, spectacular scenery, and there's some scenes and, and scenery on there I've never seen like this done before. So a lot of fun. Jeff Keebler, L and N. How many L and N layouts do you see? You know that's kind of rare too. Yeah, that's for sure. So there you go. There's there's a few plugs on some of them, but uh, there's none of these tours that you're going to regret being on. I assure you. Yeah, has somebody? So you guys, who who is in charge of uh, arranging the layout tours? Uh, the actual tours themselves were arranged by John Schindler, who's in charge of, of the whole convention. Okay. And then uh, John's good friend, Gary Gross, who's been a St. Louis area modeler for a long, long, long time, actually vetted the layouts and did some descriptions and, you know, checked accessibility and drove around to check the locations and the like. And uh, so he's worked very, very hard. The combination of those two guys pretty much set these all up. Okay. Let's get a little tiny bit off topic. Uh, and not exactly sure how to word this. Help me with this, Bruce. But you say I'll the guy, uh, uh, the, he went out and vetted the layout. So you had a certain, mm, I don't know what's the word standard. You wanted the layouts to be maybe, you know, not, uh, not just barely started or, you know, really old and dusty. You wanted them to be somewhere in the middle of, of, you know, somewhere above, you must've had some sort of a standard. Yes, we had a standard, although it's it's pretty subjective when you really think about it. I mean, so put put your own uh, engineer's cap on, and what do you want to see when you go to another city? Now, if you're a layout design special interest group guy, you know, you might want to see a layout that's nothing but plywood. Right. Um, and, and if you're an operations special interest group guy, what's what's your major function? Hey, is this railroad going to run well? Right now, but but when you're going around to see a, a realistic model railroad, what do you want to see? You want to see some nice scenery. You want to make sure it runs well. You want to see locomotives that look good. You don't want it old and dusty. Yeah, you're right. Uh, we also had to make sure accessibility is an issue. Yeah. Can you get a bus into the guy's neighborhood? Uh, can can people who might be in a walker or elderly people? Let's face it. A few of our model, a few of our model railroad friends are up in years, you know. Right. And uh, so are they going to be able to get down the basement or upstairs, wherever the layout is? Do they have a pack of wild rabid dachshunds that roam the house? <laughs> uh, you know, so there's there's a lot of things that yeah. go into it. Yeah. 
so because you guys want to make sure people get their money's worth. Exactly right. And they go home talking about St. Louis and having a good time. I mean, this this whole thing is, what is it really, man? I mean, it's a educational party is kind of the term we've used a lot and that we keep <laughs> reminding ourselves of. But the whole idea is to have a blast, right? Uh, geez, in this day and age, why do any of us need any kind of diversions or anything as well as everything is going in the world? We don't need anything to occupy our time and interest, right? Right. Yeah. So, so term, uh, tongue firmly in cheek. Yes. Um, and if they go to the website, I keep getting eventsquid.com. Bruce, can you try it? Gateway 2022. Eventsquid is the company that hosts it for us. Okay. All right. Bruce, can you try to just try the URL for me? Oh, I got here. My rabid uh, uh, teacup you Yorkies barking. No, no, right you're, yeah, if, yeah, there you go. If, if you go to the Gateway 22 URL, it redirects to this Eventsquid site. Oh, okay. All right. So I'm not way off, though. You have never yeah. seen a three, three and a half pound teacup Yorkie go for the throat like you have mine. <laughs> <laughs> so how much does the self-guided layout tours cost? Uh, 2250 I think. That's all? That's all, and you get one at uh, no charge when you uh, sign up, and you can choose any one of the self-guided tours. Right. So uh, you can choose, you know, one with Gary Hoover's or Brad Joseph's sure. or uh, my good friend Paul Freeze, by the way, who owns a lovely hobby shop in Belleville, Illinois, who models the CNNW, who's been a rail fan buddy of mine for 35 years yeah probably longer than that now that i think about it almost 40 years right he's on the say he's on that green diamond tour too with that brad yep. joseph guy um yep. so 2250 you said yeah yep <sighs> can't beat that and for 2250 really what people need to understand what they're getting is they're getting i'm assuming very detailed directions uh we give you the general direction the layout is in and and uh, uh kick the kick the rear bumper and send you off across the river <laughs> Yes, they're going to get a little packet with descriptions, layouts, and the, the directions and like. And the cool thing about the self-guided tours is, you know, so you show up at a layout that you're particularly enamored by. You can hang out there for an hour and a half and yeah. chat and see things. And, and uh, that's that's a real benefit of the self-guided layout tours. Yeah, that is a that is a very good. And how, know, does, how do they sell, seem to be selling? Are you pretty happy with the way that's oh, going? they've sold very, very well. Yes. I, as a matter of fact... And I can't quote the exact figures, Lionel, because I'm not directly involved in that. But we've sold substantially more tickets per, t to tours, layout tours, prototype tours, events, whatever the issue is. We're, we're well above the average number of ticket sales. So the people that are coming to this event are very serious model railroaders who are here to learn and educate themselves and have a lot of fun doing it. Okay. Now, I have heard that you guys are struggling a little bit to get the res registrations up, or is that uh, how you – like – where are you at? Well, uh, we're we're a tinge under or over seven hundred as of yesterday morning. Okay. Um, our we had we had you know a lot of wins to contend with. First of all, we Absolutely. never had a chance to sell this to people at another convention. There was none in twenty or twenty one. Well, you normally go home from the previous one or two conventions with a hundred, hundred and fifty registrations. So we never had that bump. And uh, you know, then we had the the failure of the convention 2020 because of the pandemic. And uh, there was a very, very nice convention took place in Indianapolis that, that probably uh, drew a few of our potential attendees away. Uh, St. Louis has a great RPM meet. And this year it's two weeks before the national convention. Uh, now we hmm. tried to cooperate more on the, the event, but, there was some issue that they had with their obligation, the convention center, because they missed one, the pandemic. And I don't want to misspeak, but the guys with RPM were, were very helpful and agreeable to, to really helping with this convention, but just didn't work out right. Kind of had the same sort of thing with narrow gauge convention. The narrow gauge convention was going to be in St. Louis in 2020 also, but so there were issues there. Uh, so you guys so, have been, you guys have been going against a headwind right from the get go. Well, well, there's no doubt. There's no doubt about center. that. Yeah. So where we were really short was from uh, January to about March was a much drier time, if you will, than we anticipated. Now, over the past month, uh, registration has been great and they're still very strong. And when I give you some of the information I'm going to here soon, which will be released uh, to everybody after today's meetings, I think we're going to get a giant bump in registrations. Oh, okay. Well, uh, and uh, just so, just so we're all on the same page here. So you said uh, uh, registration started to go up in May, eh? May. Eh? Yeah. Yep. And and uh, May and June were very very strong. 
Um, they continue strong right now. You know, gas going down a few more cents a gallon would help us dramatically because there's, I don't know, how many hundreds of thousands of model railroaders within a day drive of St. Louis. Right, right. Would you say uh, after, like, March the 21st, the uh, registration started to go up? Well, after this so one simple... podcast we were on, they plummeted <laughs> for a little while. But then, then uh, they regained their momentum and started headed this direction. Oh, we are just out of power outage. Oh. Um, the, the answer are you serious? Was, no. Oh, okay. No. Well, I am if you don't. Had, I am if you don't give me the right answer. Well, you've had you've had some <laughs> substantial outages up in the north yeah, country. Well, yeah, lately. exactly. Yeah. Once they heard you were coming on, so uh, yeah, okay. Yeah. Speak, speaking of the registrations, how much is the registration? Uh, one forty nine, one forty nine ninety five, something like that. And that's for the complete week. Plus, and that gives you access to the train show, correct? That gives you access to the train show. It gives you access to every convention or uh, clinic, of course. Which, by the way, we have a hundred and sixty one <laughs> clinic sessions. As wow. of this morning, with 73 different presenters. Holy mess. Nice. How about that? I'm very proud that of that. Is... That was my specific yeah. responsibility. And I had a guy who helped me very much, uh, a fellow named Tom Ray, who I'd never met before, who's got to lay out south of St. Louis, but he's been a big help. And we got a great uh, clinic uh, slate. It also gets you um, the one layout tour at no charge. Drive yourself layout tour at no charge. Right. And so, uh, so, yeah, I see. And uh, man, you're starting out. You're you're taking a chance. You're starting a convention off with a guy named Martin Jenkins. The very first, one of the very first clinics. Well, you know, I just uh, I didn't know the guy and he volunteered, <laughs> sent me some stuff about his clinics about two weeks ago. And what a cool guy. I can't wait to learn all about his uh, clinics. He's a very interesting guy, as most moderators are. I mean, the truth is. You know, some of them are a little cranky now and then, but the facts are they're interested in learning and they tend to be well read and we share the same interests, right? History, trains, locomotives, sure. passenger trains. So they're all generally pretty nice guys. That's a massive job, eh? organizing tw- uh, 71 people to give out like over 100 clinics. Dude, yeah. I, tell you, I tell you what, it is, it is brutal. <laughs> it is fun and I've done it before for regions and divisions. I did it for the National in 2001, but I had one guy who in the last month has changed his clinic schedule seven times, Jesus. seven times. And, you know, he apologized every single time. And finally, after about the fourth, I told him, I said, here, just can the apology. I understand there's a lot of issues. I'm going to work with you and do the best you can. Don't worry about it. But it's hard, you know, and then you move somebody around. Then somebody's work doesn't, you know, their yeah. work makes some work. And you got to pull the plug on their clinics that you've already advertised. And it, it is tough to do. But I'll tell you what, most of these clinicians, are really dedicated to the hobby and they want to teach people and they want to share things with people. And as a rule, they are very excited to be able to do that. Yeah. I yeah. mean, the clinic, uh, no, go ahead, Bruce. Yeah. And I was going to say, no, in addition to the, the clinics that you have access to, uh, with your basic registration, you also have, uh, uh, some others modeling with the masters and things as an extra cost. And, uh, those have been wildly popular in the past. So it's nice to see you have a good selection of those, uh, available as well. Correct. Modeling of the masters. We got a great room, a great facility set aside for modeling with the masters. And, uh, I think that's going to be very successful. I just saw communications going back and forth between, uh, Jim Gore with, uh, modeling of the masters and, and, uh, Jimmy Abels from our convention about uh, registrations and such for each of those sessions. So we got that set up and that should be very, uh, very well attended. Um, We have three clinics in the regular clinic slate that there's a cost to. Um, One of those is an Arduino clinic by um, Speed Muller. One is a a nano animation clinic by Leslie Eaton. And uh, actually a third one is a hands-on decal clinic. And there is no charge that I was mistaken. Uh, it's all free of charge with extra leftover um, uh, rolling stock and decals from previous shows and the like. We're, we're, uh, the gentleman who's doing that, David Lowell, who's very active in the St. Saint, Saint Louis Gateway Division, the NMRA, is presenting that clinic. And there is no charge for that one. That'll be really cool. And you got uh, under videos, you got uh, uh, five pretty interesting videos here people should take a look at if they're trying to decide. If they're still trying to decide whether or not they're going to take it in. Um, well, I hope so. <laughs> um, what about the hotel? Like, say somebody listens to this clinic today on July 25th or this uh, podcast. It is a clinic. It's a clinic on how to talk to a hockey guy. 
Um, there you go. Uh, and throw some model real ring in for fun. Exactly. So say somebody's listening to this podcast today. It's a couple of weeks before the convention. Is there still going to be rooms at the hotel or where are you at with that? As of this morning, uh, we still got plenty of hotel rooms. You know, we have, uh, I don't know what you'd say, relief, relief valve set up. So if we exceed the number of rooms, uh, we're not going to have any problem with that. You know, I think I may have misspoke a moment ago, guys. I think I said registration was 149. Registration is 179 for the convention. The hotel room rate is 149. Yeah, because okay. that's what I remember. The hotel rate was pretty reasonable. Yeah, we got them to agree to, to lock in that rate um, back, you know, after we had to cancel the 2020 convention. They've worked with us very well. Hotel's a really nice facility. And the convention wing, I guess you'd call it, or the convention area of the hotel is perfectly suited for this. Uh, two major central rooms surrounded by smaller meeting rooms and, and 90% of the, uh, oh, 95% of the conventional hotel activities are, are right there, man, right there. We're going to have the mud hens, which is a narrow gauge HON three module layout set up in the, uh, foyer right outside the one room, six great clinic rooms modeling with the masters nearby. It's all right there. So it's convenient to get back and forth and you can hit up a lot of these clinics very quickly. Or very easily, yeah. I should say. Now, is the hotel right downtown St. Louis? Uh, I'm yep. just thinking if somebody's looking for going to a ball game or something, that's easy access from the uh, the hotel? Uh, five blocks, I guess, from uh, Ballpark Village, okay. maybe six. So, yeah, walkable. It's about four blocks in the Gateway Arch. Uh, beautiful new park over the interstate in downtown St. Louis, so you no longer have to walk through you know, a concrete overpass. You walk through a beautiful park. They just redid the museum underneath the Gateway Arch. It's Museum of Westward Expansion, uh, which is which is really a beautiful museum. Uh, so downtown St. Louis is pretty nice. It gets a bum rap for a lot of different reasons, but uh, it's pretty nice. We got a Major League Soccer Stadium being built not too far from where the convention is. Um, uh, you know, St. Louis is a big sports town. College sports, uh, Missouri and Illinois basketball has always been a great rivalry, so it's a good place to be. And, and uh, you know, strangely enough, we were at Six Flags last week. My wife and I got passes Six Flags. We go all the time. And we're standing in line talking to people, and they were vacationing in St. Louis from Minneapolis. There you and go. So, uh, yeah, so we just sat down and had a drink. I said, so, you know, tell me the story. Where would you, where'd you find this out? They go, well, I think it was, now I may misspeak, misspeak here, but I think they told me Forbes magazine Rated St. Louis one of the most reasonable and interesting places to, va- or one of the most reasonable and interesting cities to vacation in the United States this year. Wow! And uh, wow. it might have might have been Fortune Forbes or Fortune is where they saw the story. Okay, if so I'm not me, mistaken. It, but regardless, so it sounds like you guys, regardless of you got 700 registrations. Uh, hopefully, you'll pick up quite a few more over the next uh, towards the end. But uh, sounds like you guys are just uh, excited and ready to rock and roll. Or you're going to give these 700 registrants the best time of their life. They're going to have a great time. We got uh, operations is a big deal in St. Louis, and we got some fantastic operating sessions set up. Uh, can I can I drop my secret yeah, bomb now, right yeah, now? Yeah, let's let's do it. Certainly, now. let's go. Okay, as of this morning, I had a telephone call with Mr. Jeremy Jansen of the uh, Gateway Fremo N Scale Group. And I'm sure most of you guys know what this this is. I'm not going to give you a, a, an indoctrination on it, but uh, Fremo is a modular group that plugs together in a, a nonlinear form. And uh, Gordy Roberts, the uh, um, president of the NMRA, arranged this with Jeremy Jansen and John Schindler, our, uh, the guy in charge of the convention, I guess, our, our director, our president emeritus. And we are going to have a new version, a different version, of kind of the classic operations road show. Oh yeah. Oh, well, that's and how about cool. that? How about that? And we're going to have a 90 plus foot N scale Fremo layout complete with helix, by the way, and uh, in operation for the entire convention, there will be three operating sessions a day, wow. Monday through Thursday. And Perfect. there will be one or maybe even, I know there'll be one on Friday. Uh, those sessions are going to have, Six train crews of two people each. And it's not going to be so much a a tutorial as the real operations roadshow, the former operations roadshow is, I should say. Uh, By the way, John Young is consulting with us and going to help us on that. If anybody knows, he was kind of the 
the Emeritus or the Operations Roadshow. Right. John did an outstanding job with Operations Roadshow for all those years he did, starting with 2003 yeah. in Toronto. So he and his wife, by the way, I was at that convention with both my daughters. Um, that was a great convention, by the way, a lot of fun. I bought a, a Canadian Olympics hockey sweater there at a store on Young Street. But regardless, Beautiful. Um, to get back to this, so we are really excited this is pulled off. These guys have done an amazing job to put this together for us. Uh, obviously no charge. It's going to be educational, but it's not going to be a clinic. It's not going to be to the extent probably that that original ops roadshow was. And the whole goal, the focus here, what we hope is that can become a future fixture at the NMRA convention. Right. Because if you take a look at our clinic schedule, the focus is operations. You know, everybody yeah. wants to operate model trains, man. It is yeah. and, and really If growing. it's anything like the, the ORS uh, was, you know, people kind of, oh, I don't know. And you stick a throttle in their hands and three hours later, whatever the length of the session is, they got a, such a smile on their face and they've had a blast. So for those who haven't really experienced it, want to get an idea, and this is going to be a beautiful, perfect chance for them to kind of get into it and ha have a lot of fun and see what ops is all about. Well, you know, it's a, it's an anecdote and I'm not going to go into this one either, but my grandson's here visiting from Colorado is, or California, seven years old. So the Wii's and the Nintendo switch and everything hasn't come out of the box because I taught him how to run my layout and he goes downstairs and all he wants to do is run my trains. Beautiful. And, and you know, his, he made some comment to me the other day. It's, it's like a real video game or something that, and it oh, is, there you, go. Yeah, you know, it is a lot of fun. It, yeah. Yeah. Absolutely is like uh, I always, I always compared it to like like playing Monopoly. Yeah, it, it's and a role playing you, game. And if you didn't do it, if you yeah. didn't, if you don't follow the rules in Monopoly, it's going to ruin the game yeah. for everybody else. And it's yeah. the same oh, with right. operations if you don't do it yeah. properly. And uh, that's a fantastic. I highly recommend if you haven't signed up for the convention yet, sign up for the convention just for the try to get in and get the experience of being part of one of these operating sessions because yeah. I'll never forget when I went to Kansas City. Uh, where, uh, I, when I first got there, I went over to the operations road show and there was our buddy, Peter Borchard's operating and our buddy, uh, Boston, Joe Cummings and Stuart Sterling. And two of those guys had never really operated a layout and they were having the time of their life. Yep. And uh, now if people want to s sign up for this, is it on the registration somewhere or how uh, would they, uh, get their name on a list if they want to do this? Very glad that you asked that question. We had a long discussion about that today, and, and John Young in particular felt the best way to do this is we are not going to have any pre-registration because there's a relatively small number of spaces here based on yes. the total people coming. So here's the plan. Um, everybody will have a card in their um, swag bag when they register that reminds them and tells them where to go at the hotel to register and sign up. John's wife actually is going to hang out starting Sunday evening at the convention and sign up registrants in person. And we're going to take a few extra names for each session uh, in case somebody doesn't show up or can't make it in time or changes their mind. So we decided the best thing to do. So otherwise, you know, people who hear this podcast or see the Facebook announcement coming up in a day or two, or happen to be talking to me and I'm telling the story at the hobby shop, they jump in and before you know it, you could have half or two thirds of all these spaces gone before half the people even hear about it. Right. So we thought this was the best way to do it. Um, uh, we're so, going to have information so, about it on the website, of course, but we're going to sign up at the convention. Good. Yeah. That, that's going to be a blast. Uh, another question. I'm just looking at your prototype tours. Uh, is there charges for the prototype tours uh, yep. for this? Uh, I, I see a bunch, but I don't see any, uh, any information here. What, what the charge might be for, uh, a prototype tour. Well, the, the, look, looking at a different spot and not the right place. Well, and I'm not the, uh, you know, I never look at this website <laughs> as an attendee. <laughs> so I don't think any of the charges for the tours are in the descriptions. Uh, you got to get, you got to start the registration process okay. and get the prices there. And I'm embarrassed to say, I, I, I couldn't even tell you exactly where to go here. Okay, uh, uh, but, but they, they're going to be what, like twenty, twenty-five bucks type thing for. Uh, a, a well, we got we or? got we got a pretty expensive one. We got a pretty expensive one, which I'll tell you a little bit about here. Okay. Even though I can't tell you the price, that's uh, <laughs> that's kind of like a um, used car operation or something here. Yeah, it'd be like uh, if you were. It'd be like if you owned a couple of car dealerships or something. Yeah, yeah. yeah the past tense is the word there. <laughs> is the key to that. Uh, what this is, 
is a we're going to have a special train on the Terminal Railroad Association. Uh, that excursion is Thursday, the 11th, 830 to 1230 and 1230 to 3:30. There's two separate private trains. And uh, this is going to be rare mileage excursion over the Terminal Association Railroad with a couple of Amtrak cars. So what you're going to be doing is going by yards and interlockings and crossings and industrial sites that, you know, you never get the opportunity to see from this point of view, from this perspective. Uh, crossing over the Mississippi River twice, going actually through the, the Terminal Railroad Madison, Illinois yard, which is the second largest freight yard in St. Louis after uh, the um, Alden Southern's Gateway Yard. And this is a very cool um, excursion. And as I've as I've done already, I've embarrassed myself enough times here tonight. I don't know offhand what that one costs. It's not cheap, but it's going to be a very cool. Uh, well, and and the thing event. of it is, it's like going to any convention. You can't really ex. You're not really. If it's under a hundred dollars, it's not expensive. Yeah. I mean, I don't know what it costs to go to a St. Louis Blues game, but I can tell you what it costs to go to a Leaf game. And for the for that two hours of enjoyment. There are three hours of enjoyment. You're you're for two people. You're looking at somewhere between two and two hundred and a thousand dollars. Well, you know the the truth is this is not an inexpensive hobby the way most of us practice it. Um, it could be more inexpensive than most of us choose to make it. Actually, well, you know what <laughs> I I would I would argue with you because you look at it. The convention's one hundred and seventy nine dollars. You say you throw in a couple of self-guided tours, that's another 50 bucks. And then say you go on this terminal railroad thing and it's, I don't know, for argument's sake, 75 bucks. You're talking $300. If you want to sit in, yeah. the, in the lower bowl at a Leaf game, one seat is going to cost you $300 and it's only yeah. going to last three hours. This convention is going to last all oh. week. And there's, aside from those things included in that money, you got uh, 70, 100 and some odd clinics to choose from. You have an operation, uh, an op opportunity to operate this end scale layout and learn some more about operations. I mean, it's uh, it's just endless what you get for this money. So, it's very seriously, don't and and then on top of that, you've got a really good deal on the hotel room. So, I mean, yeah. honestly, it's a it's a it's very good value for the money. All right, you want to know the price for this terminal railroad excursion? No, sure. No. Seven, $75. <laughs> wow. There you go. What, well, bing, bing, bing. You win the prize. I hit it right that on. Man. I hit it right that on. Yeah. There you go. Well, the not, grand finale. I'd rather not tell you what I paid to go ride a photo freight on the 1309 back in February. Where was that? Probably more than 75, I'm guessing. On the Western Maryland. <laughs> on the Western Maryland. Oh, yeah, right. It yeah. was a kick, man. It was fantastic. Yeah. I got to visit with Jim Wren, uh, too, at, at the time. And who's He's Jim Wren? Trains Magazine. Oh, Jim Wren was the editor of Trains Magazine. He right. passed away. Yeah. He had right. Okay. Right. Okay. Right. Right. Yep. Right. Right. But a wonderful guy. Um, didn't didn't ever meet anybody that wasn't a friend of his. Very cool guy, and I'm very happy I got to to meet him and visit with him again. I'd crossed his path many times, and you know he never remembered me. Who 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 am I? Yet sure. always had a smile and a handshake, and uh, they gave him a special award for train sponsored this deal with some kind of matching grant to help restore that engine and that was very cool and what what nice. railroad the western it's it's a uh chesapeake in ohio 2882 and it's the last ball and locomotive ever manufactured and it's the largest um simple artic uh, largest um not simple uh dupe uh what is it called complex duplex Articulated, right. I can't remember well, what, it's what was called. what was the railroad du Western? duplex like, or com compound probably compound it, compound well, yeah high the high pressure and low pressure that's cylinders. it compound well it right. runs now on the Western Maryland Scenic Railroad okay right and that, out that of Cumberland a... Maryland but it was a CNO engine right um and how much did that cost go ahead and tell uh, us you're, you're not selling you're not selling it on the you're not was it more than a thousand dollars uh no no I think it was eight hundred bucks there you go yeah. and you had a ball had a ball and and Victor Hand was there. You guys know who Victor Hand is? Bruce? No. <laughs> well, so, you know, I'm a real was avid. He, was he a hockey player? Yeah. No, 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 oh. no. I don't think oh, so. Oh, okay. I'm a very avid fan of classic trains, photographs, and photographers from Charles Clegg to Dick Kendig. And Victor okay. Hand is one of those guys. In particular, he was predominant and preeminent in the late 60s and 70s. He's good friends with a friend of mine, Harold Edmondson. They wrote a couple books together. 
and just a classic photographer. And he was shooting with a speed graphic. Oh, nice. The oh, four, yeah. The old, yeah. Four, the old four by five speed graphic. Yeah. Yeah. Isn't that Man, cool? Th- th- those are unbelievable cameras. And yep. th- to think of what those photographers were able to do with that equipment is absolutely outstanding. Yep. I'm going to give you a couple more anecdotes here real quick about that trip. Take your, take your time. So there were a hundred photographers, hundred seats sold and about close to a quarter of those. I didn't take an actual, uh, survey. We're shooting film cameras, wow. nice, including several shooting movie film cameras. Yes, that's right. You heard it correct. It wasn't a glitch in the Canadian uh, broadcasting network, <laughs> film cameras, film movie cameras. I did take actual notes on this. There were 30 people on this train that I felt were in their late twenties and younger. There you go. And I took it upon myself to survey every single one of those people and ask them how they got started in the hobby. Would either of you esteemed scholars like to take a guess? Uh, so I'm guessing media. a train set somewhere near Christmas tree. I'm maybe? guessing social media. Well, you both guessed wrong. Oh, there you go. Thomas the tank engine. Oh, there you go. Oh, there you go. Every single one of them. Now, a couple through in number two, the Polar Express movie. Right. Right. But Thomas the Tank Engine. There you go. And every one of these guys has their own YouTube channel and their own Facebook page, and they're shooting with fancy equipment and double exposure and flying the drone and it was it was very eye opening for anybody who thinks the interest in railroads and railroading is dead because nah, it is no, not. Brother, all there, all we don't have that discussion out there. Yep. We don't have that yep. discussion. And just so you're clear, this is not a Canadian. This is a worldwide production. What you're on right now, we have ah. people all over the world listening to this. As a matter yep. of fact, just a few a couple of weeks ago, we had we had our our, our big uh, picnic slash barbecue slash convention. Thanks to Tom Jacobs. And his yes. hard, hard work, oh. and his wife Deb, and yeah, uh, okay. outstanding job they did. Yeah, outstanding, outstanding job they did. Yeah. Um, they could have made it more about me, but that's okay. I'm used to. That. I'm getting sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, uh, we had people. We had fellow from Switzerland and people from Britain and Got people come from people, people from UK over. Yeah, you, uh, we people love yeah. this hobby and this hobby. Is, we don't talk about that anymore on the podcast about the hobby dying because it's not this. It's not. It's so much bigger than anybody realizes. It's just it's, like the it's experience one of those you old have. grumpy guys tales. The yeah, old, old like boys. So there's an old like, grumpy guy. Just, exactly. Yeah. Just imagine you spent you paid eight hundred bucks, which for a Leaf playoff game is lower bowl price for three hours yeah. of entertainment, yeah. and uh, uh, there was eight. Would you say eight hundred or hundred guys or eight hundred? Hundred seats. Yep. Wow. Yep. So I mean. Yeah, and about thirty of them were thirty percent of them were were, yeah. were young. That's yeah. that's it. Yeah, there were even a couple uh, sporting a man bun. Well, there you go. Of yeah. which I was not one. Yeah, no, I'll yeah. never do that either. So, and I'll never dye my hair. So there you go. There you go. Well, there were actually a couple guys with dyed hair, and that is true, actually. Yeah, but <laughs> <laughs> that, that I will never do yeah. it. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. Um, yeah, so that sounds like fun. Uh, a quick am, question. Well, I'm looking at your website just to digress a bit. Uh, what about the non-rail tours? It looks like you got an interesting program put together for those who aren't interested in uh, some of the rail tours. There's there's some interesting tours up in this non-rail uh, stuff. Well, I actually found the page where all the tours are listed in the price. You got to click oh, on beautiful. register, and then if you haven't registered, click change registration, ah. and uh, that gives you all the individual items that you can buy separately and their prices, even if you haven't registered. But uh, well, the, the an interesting thing about St. Louis is St. Louis has a tremendous amount of, of uh, free attractions. Now, they're not free because we're taking you there on a bus and we're providing some food or drink or whatever. But Grant's Farm, which is owned by Anheuser-Busch, well, that's not the case anymore, but we don't have time to discuss that here. That was uh, August A. Bush's private residence in St. Louis, and the family lived there until not too many years ago. Part of the family did. They got a fantastic farm with this beautiful beer garden where they give away free beer and you get you can buy bratwurst for lunch. And they got animal shows and petting zoos and attractions to see. You've got the St. Louis Science Center. You got uh, Forest Park, which is generally rated top three or four parks in uh, the United States. Uh, the St. Louis Zoo, which is uh, generally rated number one or two in the United States and top ten the entire world. Wow. Um, so those are, those are fantastic tours. We got the, uh, 
you know, the standard, all the tourist spots in St. Louis, Cleed's Landing, the old cathedral, old courthouse, Bush Stadium, and Iser Bush Brewery, which is in Bev now, but they got a fantastic tour. Uh, yeah, we got some great stuff set up here, and it's going to be a lot of fun. And, uh, you know, the, the most difficult thing about these conventions, I remember my mom and dad and I, when we'd get to a convention, we couldn't wait to find a place to sit down and get a Coke and pull out the timetable and start seeing what we wanted to do. And you're overwhelmed. You can't possibly do it all. Yeah, you can't yeah. do it all. You can't yeah, do it all. You have to pick and choose. And, oh, I should. No, I can't. Ah, yeah. You know, um, so that's, that's, that's part of the fun. Yeah. A lot of people are trying to take part in, in one or two of these uh, non-rail tours. That yeah. They can get a little bit of the flavor, no pun intended, of St. Louis. Yeah. But uh, St. Louis has some great attractions. There's no choice about yeah, it. I just look, look at the Grand Farms. That's where the Budweiser Clydesdales hang out. Apparently. The actual, you can walk around and see the Clydesdales. They are, nice. You can pet them. They're, the, the Clydesdales cool. are right they, there. They are, the Clydesdales are such neat horses. Yeah, uh, just a hockey anecdote. Strangely <laughs> enough, uh, you ah, probably know the uh, the name of the big pick, St. Louis's beloved number four, Noel Picard, right? Don't you? Right. Yeah, yeah. I heard of that. Yes. Okay. So, uh, by the way, I play hockey with his son and uh, his granddaughter. But regardless, Noel Picard, after he retired, ended up getting a job with a brewery taking care of the Clydesdales. Ha, did you know did that? that? No, I didn't. There you, go. you bet. Um, there you go. I don't want to. I don't want to put a damper on your enthusiasm because it's a great interview so far. But your terminal rail uh, train excursion. Yes. You left out a couple of important points. What did we leave out? Uh, no high heels. And you have yeah. to wear a shirt. Uh, well, I think it says that in the description of the tour. I know. Well, well, I, that was. Uh, and some of them you have to have oh long my... pants. <laughs> oh, well, I don't Man, know. This is a tough room. Holy I can't. Moly. I can't be on top of everything. <laughs> this is a tough room. Ask come, me on. A come on, come on, Bruce. That was that was, <laughs> that was, and and then I was going to follow. Well, Bruce, I, I know if you were going, you'd be planning on wearing your well, high heels. And, and Bruce, just, I, I, I was I was going to follow this up. I was going to follow it up with only shirts are required. Yes. Well, there you go. <laughs> Nothing about pants. A little yeah, something exactly. say long pants. Right? Yeah, exactly. Remind me, remind me, uh, Lana, when remind we Remind you to have person. your webmaster clarify that you have to wear clothing on both upper and lower. Yeah. And I'm just reading this under restrictions. No high heels, open toe shoes, no sandals or flip-flops, no weapons. Shirts are required. Dress appropriately. Well, the dressing appropriately, there'll probably be a large number of model rivers who fail that test dramatically. <laughs> well, that, that's a good shot right there, yeah. But uh, remind me to, to give you a little anecdote uh, in St. Louis regarding the uh, the dressing appropriately and like. It certainly isn't fit for family consumption over the, <laughs> the worldwide radio network. <laughs> but I do have a very good story about that. So what's the, what's the one thing you're looking forward to with this convention? And don't say when it's over because you don't sound like a guy that cares about it being over. You sound more like a guy that cares about people having fun. So what is the one thing you're looking forward to? Uh, well, I'll tell you the truth. What I'm looking forward to most of all is getting there Sunday morning on uh, the 7th and uh, 6th or whatever day that is. I, uh, at some point I'll be certain of the right date and actually starting to physically put this thing together, setting it up, making sure the tables are where they're going and people starting to flock in, you know, Hey, I got a, I got a module for this Fremo layout. Where's it go? Uh, you know, that kind of stuff. I can't wait for the excitement of that very, very first day. And seeing my friends coming in and getting registered and people I haven't seen for a couple of years, I can't wait. And meeting people that have become friends of mine. You know, we started working on the 2020 convention in 2018. Right. So we're going on five flipping years of this. <laughs> Let's get going, for God's sakes, already, right? Yeah, exactly. Let's drop the puck, as I like to say. On the one <laughs> Ken Patterson show, I made a comment about that. and Somebody said you know if we like trains because we're not interested in sports and those overpaid athletes and this guy's talking about dropping a puck do you know how much those hockey players make and uh we just shrugged that off of course because hockey players earn all the money they they make but regardless uh where was i i digress you know hanging out with you guys really completely <laughs> scatters my old brain thought pattern i know really that's yeah. like, who would have guessed? Uh, but that's that's what I am looking far too much. No, I exactly. cannot wait for that yeah. first day. Let's yeah, go. Let's right. get this yeah. thing rolling. It's underway. Let's rock and roll. Yeah, you, you know, guys, I'll and, and then like, before yeah. you then before you know it, it'll be like when I was involved in the Toronto Convention. Before you know it, it's over. You go, wow, that went by quick. Yeah, it goes well, by it's, fast. It's depressing after it's after you've worked on one. And like I said, I've done regionals and a national before in St. Louis and division ones, and it's it's sad afterwards. And uh, I had to plan. A, I had to plan a couple trips and adventures afterwards, so that I can keep my my uh, 
attitude up, I think, because it'll be sad. It's been a lot of work and a lot of work with a lot of good friends and uh, some who aren't with us anymore, who didn't make it through this whole thing, you know? That's and, right. Uh, that's never any fun. That's never yeah. any fun, but it's your, it's a guy's, I, I've, I love your enthusiasm and I love the fact that you guys stuck with it and, and uh, you guys deserve to have a successful convention because oh, you guys, uh, man, you went through the storm of the century just trying to get here. And uh, I, the, the amount of obstacles you guys overcame to get to this point is really, it's kind of uh, overwhelming when you think about it. When you think back, it's, it's amazing how human beings can adapt, really. You know, yeah. do you remember seeing those pictures of Toronto and Montreal and L.A. and New York City and Chicago with nobody in the streets? Yeah. You know, my God, it was it was pretty depressing. And I got to say this a friend of mine. and I just talked about this the other day. Thank goodness we had, uh, you know, all my closest circle of friends. We all had model trains to keep us entertained and busy and distracted and happy, you know. And, uh, you know, we had some people who worked with us who've worked on this convention that that had a very uh, close brush with the reaper and uh you know and what are they doing now they're back working hard to put a convention together have fun with their friends so that's what we all do i know it's spectacular so now if people want to see uh here's something we don't want to blow past so if you want to if you're thinking about being part of one of these operations things so you click on the opsig and it takes you to the operations page and there it has all the li- operating sessions.com. Bruce, we got to talk to that guy, Eric Smith, yes. I think. Eric uh, Smith is the guy. Yeah, we got to talk to Eric Smith. Um, all the layouts that are available for operations are listed, and each one has several photos. It's a great page to go to. It is a, it is a very interesting guy. If you want to, yeah, if you want to find now, out. Now, the, the rumble I am hearing on that, though, is I believe. Most of those op sessions are filled by now, but you can still sign up as a standby in case there's some changes. Yeah, still fill, still sign up as a standby. And also, if you're trying to decide which layout tours you want to take, this is a great place to go to look oh, at yeah. photos of these layouts. Yeah, because all, la- all these layouts would be on uh, on the layout tours. As well and there's a yet. ton of photos. Uh, no, I, I, yeah. I, hold on one moment. I'm not Oops. so sure. I think there's a couple that overlap here and there that, I think there might be an OPSIG layout or two that are not on some tours okay. or the other way around. All right. Okay. Uh, I, I can't comment on how many are full. I do know that mine happens to be full um, at this point. And but, um, how many are you just having one operating session too? What I'm only mean? able to have one because I, I, I can't, you know, I'm going to have, busy. Uh, I'm going to have a few responsibilities that week. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Um, so uh, cutting your free time a bit. A little bit. Yeah. You know, so here I just see real quick, big bear Creek. That's my buddy, Greg Gramlich. So his layout, I don't think his layout's on any of the regular tours. It's just on operating okay. session. But but there are, you could, uh, what is it, cross, Bruce would like this. What way do you hear this, Bruce? You're going to be impressed all the hell when I say this. Okay. I'm you, sitting down. I can tell you. Yeah, you need to be sitting down for me to come up with a statement like this. You can okay. cross-reference between the, to, to the layouts that are on the layout tours and the layouts that are available for operation, and, and you'll find which ones are available for both things. And then you can well, see you photos. See, you like, can do that, yeah. Yeah, that's, I think the, that's called cross referencing. No, I uh, think it'd be cross pollinating, uh, isn't it? Is that it? <laughs> can no. I? Could you not just play along? <laughs> <laughs> I don't. I don't. Can I not just have? Can I just not have one moment of glory here? I'm sorry. I, I, <laughs> forgive me. I think it's cross reference. Remember, it's all about Lionel. Yeah, there you go. Exactly. Um, I'm. Uh, anything else you want to tell me? Uh, come and see us. We've worked hard to yeah. put on a great convention, the kind of convention we all like to attend. And I assure you guys, uh, guys and gals, uh, kids, children of all ages, um, I assure you, you're going to have a good time. Everybody's anxious to host you. And, uh, St. Louis is a wonderful city. It's the gateway to the West. You know, it's, uh, Lewis and Clark took off from just North of downtown St. Louis on the core of discovery. Um, and I do have to throw out one more plug to my lovely youngest daughter, Carolyn, who did all those videos for us. Wow. You know, way, to go, nice. way to go, Carolyn. Way to go, Carolyn. She used to be, uh, she was marketing manager for the American Girl Doll Company for a while. And now uh, she's an event planner for Amazon in Louisville. Wow. And uh, she and her husband do 
uh, the typical influencer stuff. They got a Facebook page and they got a YouTube channel. And uh, her husband's Indian and they just got back from India riding some trains in India. Now, he's not nice. a rail fan and she's not really, but she grew up riding trains. And so, you know, they, they went to India to ride trains. Wow, that. beautiful. That's what they uh, went for to India for? Uh, no, 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 no. They went to India, but they traveled around on the trains. On right. The okay. All right. That must have been quite an, ex- uh, quite an experience. And so yeah. go ahead, Bruce. I was going to say quickly, uh, what about the National Train Show? Well, that's what I yeah. was getting to. But first, oh, show. there you go. Yeah. yeah. But I was going to say, uh, we didn't really clarify. It's in the Marriott. The hotel that it's in is a Marriott, which is a high-end hotel. Buck 49 yes. a night is uh, yep. That's a good price right what about, right what about yeah. is there any opportunity if somebody wants to, is only available to okay, come say the, the Thursday and Friday of the second week? Is there any kind of a, you can go by the day or anything? Oh, yeah, 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 sure. There's individual day and a couple of different multi day prices, I think. Um, and there's literally one day item. Now, I wouldn't recommend doing that, you know, in most cases because uh, if you're going to show up and walk in and pay for one day, you're not really going to know what's full and what isn't. And uh, whether or not that's going to be the best value for you, I don't know. But yes, indeed, that is available. Okay. And uh, But if somebody's not sure and they're passing through, or even if they live in the St. Louis area and they've never been to an NMRA thing, but they're, they'd they like to try it, there is in a town one- on business, you know, yeah, they there, see that. Yeah, there's a one-day pass. Yeah, so the, the National Train Show, to jump to that page, um, is across the river in Illinois. It's at a convention center in collinsville illinois also called the gateway convention center actually uh collinsville was the gateway to the gateway to the west actually but uh it is a very very nice convention center with free parking um it's a it's a smaller venue and what people are going to find is not nearly as many modular layouts are going to be in attendance i'm afraid but uh, this was done for a couple of different reasons, not the least of which is they were supposed to be in the middle of a huge renovation of the St. Louis Downtown Convention Center, which is now underway, but not nearly to the extent we were warned it probably would be. And we wanted to avoid that potential. But regardless, we have free bus transportation to the convention center on f- starting Friday morning when the when the train show is free of charge to any convention attendees, including if somebody buys a Friday right. uh, pass. They get admission to the National Train Show, which for, I don't know, it's uh, three, four hours, something like that, that's exclusive for the convention attendees. So there won't be any other riffraff wandering around there. Exactly. Any civilians? No, exactly. Um, so you're not going to, so you're not going to, ha- you don't have a ton of room for modular layouts, but you're managing to get in all the vendors? Yeah, the uh, it's completely sold out. Uh, they actually have stuff that's going to be in aisle space and uh, like, like, uh, lounge space i guess you could call it um it's a lovely first class facility but it's a smaller facility my understanding is the the shortage if you will is gonna be in modular layouts there's some modular layouts that couldn't get in there uh one of the things that was the impetus with these fremo guys they couldn't make as big a layout over there as they wanted to now they're gonna have a layout over there too really yep yep uh you know t-track likes to have a giant layout and i don't think there's nearly as much room as they wanted but it just wasn't a possibility to do anything else there's only three convention centers in st louis the other one is in st charles missouri which traffic would have been horrendous getting out there on a friday and getting back on friday afternoon and evening and the collinsville site was the best alternative um i don't understand is, is that the same location they have the rpm or is it different location? yes 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 that's the same it location okay. the rpm is in yes have you been there no, but I, I knew the RPM was in Collinsville, and I was, uh, Lionel and I were just discussing on a trip we had today. We were wondering if it was the same location or not. Yep, okay. that's it. I have a trip today. I haven't seen you for a week. Well, we had we had a trip at some time. <laughs> Too late. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> we were doing so well. We were doing so well, and then the time warp kicked in, and that was it. Yeah, exactly. They uh, come to the left instead of the right or something like that. <laughs> And I, I want a diet Pepsi. I can't drink that regular Pepsi. Well, well, to my to my defense, it was in a slot that said diet Pepsi. Oh, so I just okay. grabbed it. Said diet you just Pepsi. Grab it. it said diet Pepsi. I just you grabbed it. it. Said Max Pepsi Max diet, and I said, "Oh, right, there you go." And then you said, "What the hell is this?" Yeah, and, and I felt, and, like... I, and I went back in and told the guy, "Yeah, sure, go ahead, just put it back in and grab the other one." <laughs> um, I'm excited about this for you, uh, yeah. Brad. I think this is going to be pretty cool. Great. I'm uh, anything uh, we can do to help as well. We're going to do this. And uh, I just uh, think it's uh, I think you guys, 
yeoman's job, man. Hanging in there, putting this thing back on, getting it, getting it, getting it going ahead. I mean, you're at 700 attendees now. You're probably going to pick up quite a few more between now and uh, when the convention comes. And it's going to be. What was your goal? What were you? Did you guys come up with some sort of goal when you realized you were in a hundred mile an hour headwind? Uh, well, if you go back to 2018, the goals would vary somewhere between 27 people and 2000. Well, there you go. 20, so, I mean, uh, 27 yeah. and 2000. Yeah, it was somewhere in that, in that range. And we've set, I think we, we, uh, we've been operating around our 59th different goal number here recently. Okay. Oh wait, that's just 59 different goals this calendar year. <laughs> Uh, you know, uh, when Russia invaded Ukraine, yeah. Said, well, is this going to happen? You know, when uh, Omicron hit and everything got, you know, when was that? January, when that got so bad, we thought, oh God, is this going to happen? You know, I, I don't know. I, I don't know. You know, we always were shooting for probably 1,200 people. I don't okay. Know. Okay. Maybe so is you... what we legitimately thought. And most NMRA conventions, I think, kind of hover around there. Yeah, I think so. So, you I know, mean, when you think about it that way, you guys have done pretty darn good. You remember what yeah. was happening during the Toronto Convention? I, I sure do. I got, a, I got, there's I got this the SARS thing. Yes, I, severe yeah. acute respiratory syndrome. And uh, I was a I was a columnist for Model Railroader at that point, and uh, it was left up to me to decide whether the Combach contingent should come to Toronto. And my wife was a volunteer at the local hospital, and uh, she was just to be a volunteer. It was uh, quite an arduous process, but she wanted to do her part. And uh, so all I so finally I decided. Well, let me tell you what my wife has to do just to be a volunteer at the hospital. And when I described that to them, they pulled out of the convention, and then that led to other people, a whole bunch of other people pulling out of the convention. And I personally, single handedly, ruined the convention for everybody. At least that's the story that was told. Yeah, well, I don't <laughs> think that's necessarily true that you ruined it for everybody, but uh, we had a great time. Like I say, I made a, a family road trip out of it with my two daughters, and man, we had a blast, and it, if, it was a very small train show, and uh, but the cool thing is it was such a personal level, you know? Yeah. And uh, that's where I started buying, uh, oh gosh, now the name escapes me, the guy who makes all the plastic uh, cars. Oh, uh, Sylvan, Sylvan and, products. Sylvan, Sylvan products. That's where I met Claire, those guys. Claire, Gilbert, and Sylvan, yes. And and bought my first Sylvan stuff, and now I got a batch of it on my layout, all kinds of stuff. Do you, and, have, a, uh, do you have a Facebook page for your layout? No, no I'm not much of uh, a Facebook kind of guy. Uh-oh. Is there any place Lionel, on Lionel's going to tell you you need one. Yeah, no, I'm going to effort. No, he has another chance. Okay. Is well, I do, any... have a face, I do have a Facebook page, and so does the Gateway Division, and so does the Gateway 2022 but I don't have a lot of my train pictures or anything on there. Okay. I probably so is, got a, so yeah. is there anywhere on the internet people can see your layout? Uh, yeah. The uh, Gateway Division website of um, the Gateway Division, the NMRA website has a uh, photo tour of many layouts in St. Louis. And I got some nice ones on there. Okay. I'll give you exactly what that uh, website is, if I may. Oh, you may. Because it's important for people to be able to see. It layout. is. Uh, gatewaynmra.org. Okay. And it leads with a picture there of Eric, Eric Brumans. Yeah, there you go. And there's a layout item and you, uh, a layout header and you go to model railroad layouts in alphabetical order. And I can't remember if that's the name of the layout or the, uh, it's the last name. So I'd be under J, the second group. Yeah, there you and, go. And, uh, so here it is. And man, just looking, excuse me, chills looking here at, uh, Sherman Summit, man, it's windy and, chili on this layout and everything uh, so I don't know, they're in there somewhere there's pictures in i there found somewhere. it i found it i found it just that uh, easily okay. all right there we go the layout photo galleries there it is all right cool all right well, those there. are mixed up in some way but you can see uh there's there's other unique pictures and there's some layout photos on here of people that are no longer with us we lost uh one of st louis's favorite model railroaders this year and uh and then also another one of our guys that's been a very good personal friend of mine for a long time. His wife just passed away. And, you know, like I said, there's some of these guys aren't with us anymore. So it's fun to go in and look at these pictures and remember some of these people and their layouts. Exactly. That's why you need to start a Facebook page and keep people updated on your layout because people are interested. Believe yep, it or not, yep. people are interested and they'd like to follow along. You'll you'll find it very rewarding. I think everybody I've talked, in, talked into it, it finds it very rewarding. 
because uh, people want to follow along and see what you're doing. Yeah, yeah. Um, anything else you want to tell us? Man, no, this has been a lot of fun. What what a good time. And uh, like I say, we're really looking forward to getting this thing rolling. And I uh, hope everybody comes to see us. I sure do, too. I sure I hope you get a bunch more registrations. And I don't see any reason why not. And I don't think it's expensive. And I don't think it's expensive, even if you you buy the expensive prototype tour and you buy two or three other tours. It does, you're still you're still going to be struggling to spend more than you would to go to a, a, a Leaf game. <laughs> Here, you get the Grants Farm Tour, you each get two free beer. There you go. Oh, there, there. you go. Beer. Yep. Beer. Can't we go wrong beer. with beer. Steam whistle. No. Beer. Yes. Who doesn't like beer? And then uh, uh, then in a while, we're going to contact you again, and we're going to just talk uh, model railroading and railroading and rail fanning with you. Great. Sounds good. I'm in. And you I'm are in, uh, your MMR number? Uh, 294, I think. Holy man. If I'm not mistaken. Yeah, and I'm very proud of the fact my dad got to present me with my pin and my award. Nice. And, uh, he, was, he was so proud of me. And I'll never forget that. And how old were you when you got that? Uh, well, let me see. I'm, that's a very good question. I got it probably in the early 90s. Okay. Which would have been almost, I was 40. Let's right. see, I was born in 1958. So uh, early 90s, probably. In fact, that was presented to me at a convention at the Gateway Convention Center in Collinsville. Well, there you go. There you go. And you're 64 now. Almost. All right. Almost 64. Not 64 yet. I feel like I'm 94 right now. Yes. Uh, I'm, fami- <laughs> but, uh, I'm familiar with that feeling. Uh, yes. Well, honestly, I've seen pictures of you, and you might want to see a doctor. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going next week. Don't worry to All reduce right. the stress level. Well, oh, hey, I, was, uh, I rode my uh, bike. 41 miles the other day and 98 degrees. So I'm, I'm ready for wow. action. I'm wow, fit, ready you. to roll. I'm Just uh, drop, drop the puck. Yeah, Let's there go. you go. Drop the puck. Ready to go. Um, you got a road bike or, uh, uh, what kind of bike you got? Uh, well, I, most of the time now I'm riding mostly a road bike. It's a Cannondale Synapse seven. Uh, if you know bikes very well with a CAD three, uh, composite material and, uh, aluminum and some steel alloy stuff in it. Oh, you know okay. who's going to like that, uh, Lionel? Our, our friends Chris, uh, yeah, Chris Adams Redman. and uh, Neil uh, Erickson. There you go, and me, because I ride a lot of. And I do you, a lot cause of. Yeah, because you're you're doing a lot of biking now too. I do a lot of biking. Yeah, a ton of biking well, in Florida. So my buddy Steve Goring's layout, the one that's on the cover of RMC this month, is turned into a bike trail in the city of O'Fallon. I ride it almost every day, and it crosses over the old B and O, which was CSX, of course, most recently, and it crosses over the old Pennsylvania which became Conrail, which now is CSX. And you go over the bridges that Steve's modeled, and it's very, very cool, actually. <laughs> wow. It's all very cool. Um, so, so so Steve gets more of a model road and he just ripped the rails up and make a trail. Yeah, well, that's exactly right. He's got a little bike. He's got a little bike uh, yeah. leaned up against a tree in honor of me. I don't know there where I am back in the tree, I guess, back in the tree's relieving myself or something <laughs> having a know. nature having a nature break is it yes so uh when you register do you pay then or when do you pay no you do, you can mark pay later and you can indeed do that um and you'll regularly get reminders to pay otherwise we give away your uh tours and stuff that you selected okay so you can uh, go on and register you can fill out all the information mark pay later or you can go in and register and pay at the time and what pay later as in what 30 days later a week later uh, uh, I don't later. know the answer to that. Later. Yeah, later. Yeah, I mean, we <laughs> we had some people that registered a long time ago that that uh, we had a batch that just paid up recently here. I think I don't know. There's no. Okay. I don't know. That's a trick. That's a tough question you gave me. I'm gonna have to now. I'm gonna have to create another algorithm. <laughs> yeah, create another algorithm. While you're when you're while you're, you're trying to figure out when the Leafs are gonna win, so create another algorithm. All right. Yeah. Didn't uh, algorithm invent the internet? Yeah, Al- yeah, you're right. Algorithm, yeah, algorithm, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, don't forget, you remember that the year the uh, Blues came into the league? That was the last year the Leafs hoisted Lord Stanley's vaunted silver chalice. That's uh, I know that. Don't don't press yeah. it. Don't press it. Don't press it. And it was the St. Louis Blues that created the uh, the Broad Street Bullies. Well, you know the the yeah. Uh, 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 let's be yeah. let's uh, call a spade a spade here because in the early days of the expansion. The expansion teams only played the expansion teams for playoffs until he got to the final. And yep. the St. Louis Blues, uh, very early on in 68 or 69, 
beat the living crap out of the Philadelphia Flyers to the point in where a, eh, in I'm an telling a story. Gentlemanlike way, and I'm Go telling ahead. a story here, and uh, to the point where they actually broke the leg of one of the Philly Flyers, and Ed Snyder came home from that series and said, "Never again." and created the Broad Street Bullies, which completely changed the face of hockey in the 70s. I don't disagree. That's, that's, that story is very accurate. All right. So let's, and let's, my old buddy Bob Plager, who's no longer with us, uh, ended up in the brothers. stands yep. pummeling some guy with a pizza slice or something. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe it was a cheesesteak, probably. <laughs> and then, of course, years later, the Boston Bruins took a trip into the stands, too. Yes, he did. Ah, that was a great. That was great. All right, that's it. We've uh, we've uh, pretty much. I think we've pretty much covered it all. You you register the self guided uh, layout tours are like twenty two bucks, twenty two fifty. Uh, you got a lot of great tours. We both agree that it's great value for the money. We all agree it's great value for the money. The hotel rooms a buck forty nine, one hundred forty nine dollars. It's just down the street from where the Cardinals play. I've actually been to a game, uh, a Cardinals game in St. Louis. Great stadium, man. They call it baseball heaven. That's right. It is a great stadium. And uh, what else do we, uh, if you want to find out about some of the, uh, there's that great, uh, now you're the end, uh, the end scale Fremo guys are yep. going to have a whole pile of operating opportunities for people so that whether you're a newbie or an experienced operator, this is an opportunity to, to mingle with folks that like operations. You betcha. That's a great, that is a great opportunity for people that are not familiar with model railroad operations. Yeah. That is a great opportunity. I mean, like I said, my buddy Joe Cummings and Stuart Sterling, neither one of them had really ever operated on a layout and they were treated so well by the road show. And I'm sure you guys, the, the Fremo guys are going to, are in the same, the same vein, the same mindset of, uh, it's not about seeing what you do know. It's about teaching people that want to know. For my uh, meeting this morning and my phone call this morning, I pulled out the uh, paperwork I had from the operating road show. I hung on to all that stuff. I like keeping timetables and train orders and stuff from all my buddies' railroads. And, you know, uh, a couple of guys said, well, what in the world? What do you have that stuff for? So because I had so much fun, I want to look at it to remember it. Yeah. How many guys does it take to operate your layout? Uh, uh, that's a trick question. Oh, come uh, on. That's your own the, layout. The best, the, the best operating sessions are with five guys. Okay. My layout is not a gigantic one. It's, it's a probably medium size one this day and age. The one aisle is a little tighter than it should be. Uh, a couple reasons for that, but regardless, it's, it's, it's better with a handful of five good experienced guys. And, okay. with, you know, um, a couple of newbies. Now I love having people come and run it that never have before. So, and are you one of the five operators or you just uh, circle around and keep it running? Uh, no, I generally am the guy who goes around and fix, fixes more things going wrong during the operating session that happened in the previous couple of months. You know how that is. Okay. Yeah. Let me ask you a crucial question about your operating sessions. Yeah. Snacks. What do you have for snacks? Oh, the snacks are, are mega in, under most occasions. Okay. Uh, it's generally pizza. My wife makes killer brownies, cakes. Snacks throughout the evening. Uh, every now and then, there's a, a fifth of bourbon sitting down there in the middle of the crew <laughs> calling lounge. Wow! And uh, so, no, we have a blast. We have a lot of a lot of fun. Sometimes the nights run pretty late, and there's a few slides maybe that get thrown up on the screen here and there. So you're and, just uh, you're just getting the most out of the hobby you possibly can. Yeah, the dachshunds hanging out down there. Uh, you know, see what's going on. Yeah, see, and, I, uh, I had a Datsun years ago, but then I and then I started driving Nissans. And no, no, I said Dachshund. Dachshund. <laughs> yeah, I you know, know the. Uh, the I thing know. About work with me, Joe. Brad, work with me. Work I know. With I anybody. picked up on that. I was in the car business. Remember? Yeah, I know. I know. What Datsun is. Yeah, I know. My Dachshund. You know, my Dachshund stretches from uh, Harriman to Laramie, Wyoming. Really? There you go. His tail can be in Harriman, and he can be watching what's going on in Laramie. Wow. Um. How often do you, now, because you're busy getting this convention ready, you're not operating much right now, but on a rate, when you're not doing, running uh, national conventions, how, uh, uh, how often do you operate? A couple times a month. Okay. And Pretty it's, often. Uh, yeah. And I do, I do two half sessions, if you will. You know, we run about 32 trains all told. Wow. And I uh, can't run all those in one session. People's mind starts wondering and they get tired and you want to chat and talk about the blues game. So what I we, we do is we start the session and get about halfway through it and uh, shut everything down, hog law everybody about three hours into it, and then pick up where we left off uh, the next week or two weeks whenever everybody can come visit again. 
And uh, between now and the next time we talk, you're think, going to at least think about starting a Facebook page about your layout. Yeah, I don't know. We'll see about that. We'll see about that. <laughs> I'm even... a busy guy, man. I, all this posting stuff, my uh, my daughter's posting and my other daughter's posting and my wife's posting. And, you know, I don't think I'd have a layout done if I was doing all this posting. Take, take, do you have a phone? Do you have a uh, smartphone? Oh, yeah. Yeah, take, I got a YouTube take, literally... channel. You... Oh. Well, well, hold on a minute. Well, when were you going to tell us about that? I don't know. I have uh, three minutes ago. I got a YouTube channel with a bunch of train videos that, that well, mostly they're slideshows that I've okay. prepared. Okay. What's your uh, name of your YouTube it's, channel? It's just Brad Joseph. And there's a picture of me on the Cumbrace and Toltec, I think. So you can tell it's me. Okay. But I got, I got a really cool one on the real, you know what Beecher Fest is? Uh, remind me. A uh, real famous slideshow the night before train fest. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm very proud to say I was an invited presenter at Beecher Fest a few years ago. You and go. I presented my show called The Power of Gold about my seven rides on the Rio Grande Zephyr. Wow. And uh, that's on there. And I got one on there about the Clinchfield Santa train. And I got one on there about my trips to Cuba. And I got nice. one on there about, uh, oh, a steam safari I went on to the Western Maryland and to uh, a 611 excursion. And, and I don't know, I got a few. And, Chris, and Christmas by Starlight. Oh, oh, there you go. That was on the Silver Solarium. And pro- Which, uh, power of the gold, power there. of the gold final. Yeah, that's the. Uh, well, I don't know why f- final comes up in there. Power of gold. That's the one on the real Grand Zephyr. Okay, I prefer the other Doctor Phil. So here's the deal. I, yeah, I prefer the uh, Doctor Phil Hastings. Uh, so here you go. You got 23 subscribers. Yeah. We're going to show you the power of the AML. <laughs> okay. What are you laughing at? Uh, nothing. I'm not laughing. I, I chuckled. <laughs> <laughs> it, it sounded like a laugh to me. It sounded Chuckle, like a laugh to Chuckle. me, yeah. Um, so we're going to show you the power of the AML because uh, lots and lots of people now are going to go to Brad Joseph, and I put in Brad Joseph Model Railroad. They're going to go to Brad Joseph and to see your videos, and you're going to get some new subscribers. Well, that's that's okay. That's cool. The, the, truthfully, the main reason I put them up there is so <laughs> I can access them anywhere, anytime, uh, and show uh, them to somebody. Now. I get it. I get it. But you're going to get some more subscribers. Well, at least was, double your subscription base. Yeah, Fair at enough. least. and probably we, be more than double. We brought my grandson back from California in the Southwest Chief a week ago. Did he want to come? Uh, did he want to oh, come? Yeah. Or, okay. Or did oh, yeah, you just yeah. drag him? Oh, no, no. He's here all summer. He'll be here for the convention, <laughs> actually. But um, so I ran into a guy on the train who was kind of a foamer, you know. And uh, so I was I was able to show him one of the YouTube videos on the train. Uh, nice. Is there any kind of, is there any model railroader that isn't kind of a foamer? Uh, no, probably not. No, I don't think so. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. No. Do you know yes. what a phlegm is? Do you know what a phlegm is? I don't know what a phlegm is, no. That's a fan living with mother. Oh. Who fan. wears living with mother? Yeah, a trained fan living with mother who generally wears white socks and sandals. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, not judging, just stating a fact. All right. Well, you know, when I, when I was driving up the highway today from... Uh, from uh, Toronto, I was uh, I had my left shoe on and my right shoe off. Does that mean anything? Well, that's a that's a dance step, isn't it? On the uh, it's the hokey pokey. <laughs> it's the hokey pokey. Isn't that it? Yeah. You take off one shoe and you leave the other one on, and isn't that it? Shake it all about and do the hokey pokey. Yeah. Oh, that's it. That's Thankfully, it. you weren't shaking it all about. No, no. Well, how would you know? We've been seeing each other for oh, a week. Oh, that's right. I haven't seen each other for a week, yes. <laughs> okay, I'm getting progressively <laughs> more uncomfortable <laughs> now. There, there, there's so many trips we've done together, they all yeah, blur together. All right, you know? all right uh, Bruce, can you give out our email address? Yes, uh, please uh, send us emails. We'd love to get your emails. And uh, if you're lucky, one may actually show up on Vera Mill at times. So send us an email to modelerslife at gmail.com. That's modelers with one L, modelerslife at gmail.com. And there's many ways. Uh, one of the ways you can send us an email is if you just go to our website and click on amodelerslife.com and uh, scroll down a little bit to a picture of the moderately agitated male boy, Bruce, in a particularly agitated state. Boom. You just click on that and you don't need to the address. You just fill in the subject and your text and your way you go. So uh, there's many ways to access this particular convention. You can just type into Google NMRA Convention 2022. And uh, Google will bring that up as the second thing listed. Or the first thing listed is the 2022 National Train Show. Or you can put in Gateway 2022, and that will bring it up. And uh, there's many easy ways to find this. 
Through the NMRA websites, another way. Through the yep. NMRA websites, another way. You are you are ready to go. You're ready to rock and roll. Let's drop the puck. Let's drop the Let's puck. And let's drop the gloves. Yeah. <laughs> I'm with you. I got a good story about that, too. I got a lot of stories to tell. Uh, yeah. Where that's you better be... set a few hours aside. We'll have an opportunity, I'm sure. Yeah, that's going to be that's a whole, whole That's a whole podcast. other podcast. Yeah, yeah. And you're going to be ready. We're going to ask you a lot of questions about your layout. All right. and you know what song we'll have to have in that uh, when we're talking hockey with them next time, right? Yeah, so yeah. Well, the hockey song. Do you know the hockey yeah. song? Yes. Out of boy. Not yeah, a boy. That's, I, that's that's good. That's nothing to be ashamed well, of. You're living in no, St. No, Louis no. and knowing the hockey song. Yeah. I think it's I think it's a little silly myself. But, Seriously? Uh, have you oh, ever heard? Uh, oh, yes. oh, 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 oh. Well, it's nice to talk to you. I'm not sure when this podcast will air now. Do you know Kenny Chesney's song, The Boys of Summer? Yeah. Have you ever heard the alternative words? It's no. never been recorded that I know of, but it makes its round on some hockey sites, the words about the boys of winter. Yeah, and, yeah. You know, stepping out and looking at the ice and, you know, all this stuff. It's uh, it, it, it makes the hair on the back of your neck stand up. <laughs> it's very cool. Really, it is, really. All right, all right. Yeah, well, you'll you find, lost, you'll find if you you lost me when you said the hockey song Hold sounds on. a little silly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on. Yeah. What, what can I say? Yeah, you can say it's a great song. That's what you can say. Go listen to it yeah. again and see. I, no, I, I think I've I think I've heard it enough, actually. I think I've heard it enough. Hello out there. We're on the air. It's Hockey Night Tonight. Hockey Night Tonight. Hello out there. We're on the air. It's Hockey Night Tonight. Tension grows. The whistle blows. And the puck goes down the ice. The goalie jumps and the players bump and the fans all go insane. Someone roars, Bobby scores at the good old hockey game. Oh, the good old hockey game is the best game you can name. And the best game you can name is the good old hockey game. Uh, scores 1-1. One, one. Okay, that's it. Um, what else? We did the website. Uh, oh, the website. Hey, oh, hey, Brad, have, have, you ever, have you ever wanted a t-shirt with a hot dog on it? Well, I tell you what, my dachshund, I don't know exactly how he'd react to that. <laughs> Probably would eat it because dogs love hot dogs. Yes. So if you go to a modeler, if you go to Midwest, do you ever buy any products from Midwest Model Railroad? Uh, Midwest Model Railroad, that's the outfit north of uh, Kansas City, right? It's in Independence, Missouri. Okay. I can't say as I have. you got to remember one of my best friends has a hobby shop. Oh, that's too. right, too, yeah. But, You'll have to tell uh, no, us about no, that. I have not. Okay. Well, if you go there and you use... Go to their website, which is MidwestModelRR.com, and you scroll across the navigation bar to AML. Boom. Yeah. You are in a wonderland of AML merchandise. Hats, hoodies, T-shirts, mugs, and one of the T-shirts you can buy has a hot dog on it. No kidding. No kidding. I'm we, not kid, kidding. we kid you not. We would not I'm kid gonna, about that. I'm going to check that out. Right. Well, that's nothing to joke about. No, exactly. no absolutely not. It's I'm going to have a tasty foot-long hot dog tomorrow at Six Flags. There you go. Oh, there you go. What do you? Why do you guys like Six Flags so much? What is it you like to do over yeah, at Six? Yeah, we just we just love amusement parks. Okay. You know, so I mean, we go over there and we peep watch and ride a few rides and, uh, you know, listen to some show and uh, we got the food pass, so we eat lunch or eat dinner and they got nice water park and it's just a really fun thing to do. We were at um, Disneyland two weeks ago. We went to Knott's Berry Farm two weeks ago, which is a really, really, really great park. If you've ever been there or heard of that place. Right. Uh, but no, my wife and I just love theme parks and that's the only one we got close by here. Six flags. Right. You like to people watch. Yeah. Yeah. It's a good time. It's really a good time. And we always end up meeting some people and hanging out in the one sports bar and having a beer or something, you know, if it's kind of, it's a little bit like riding a train, you somehow gravitate and end up in the same spot and start swapping stories with people. And I don't know. It's it's fun. We run into people all the time. We go over there. You seem like you're kind of a reserved fellow and have trouble getting a conversation started. Yeah, I'm I'm embarrassed and I I like to hold <laughs> back and yeah, I'm afraid so. You what can I say? You, nobody would have a chance going into your car dealership and not walking out with a car. And I'm, there were a few. There were a few that managed, but not too many. I wouldn't. I wouldn't think there would be. Um. All right. That's. I think we got our covered. Avery. Oh, I'm sure you listened to all of these podcasts and some of them twice, eh? I do listen to quite a few podcasts, actually, and uh, I intend to listen to one of yours coming up. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. <laughs> yeah, one of ours. Well, if you if you enjoy the free ones, and uh, and there's people out there that do enjoy the free ones, uh, not so sure if they um, 
<laughs> I'm not going to go there. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Just instead, I'll just cross check you. Um, there you go. Hockey chirping, man. You and I would, uh, you and I would, uh, I love to chirp. I love hockey. Chirping. I, I do too. Yeah, I do too. <laughs> um, so, uh, if you, uh, out there, if, uh, you like the free podcast and you want twice as much podcast in a week, you just go to our website, amodelerslife.com, click on Patreon. And for just 365 easy payments of 16 cents a day, you can have twice as much podcasting. And, uh, the ones on the, the free ones are on Monday. Uh, the paid ones are on Tuesday and, uh, we call that the antics channel. We have lots of fun over there. Holy cow. Holy cow. Holy Sounds cow. great. Exactly. Uh, Harry Carey. Um, that's it. Now, do you know who Foster Hewitt is? Are you kidding me? Hockey night in Canada. That's some uh, of the greatest calls of all time. All right. I actually there have a couple of them on my, uh, voice recorder thing on my phone. All right. Nice. Uh, uh, my, uh, my, uh, my ringtone for my phone is hockey night in Canada. All right. Are you ready, Brad? Do you remember anything from the last podcast? Uh, no. We yeah, just... yeah. I remember. I remember some, but I just all of a sudden my mind started drift drifting to uh, <laughs> opening night and the uh, the initial preseason games and wondering what's going to end with Vladimir Tarasenko. You got me all fired up with the Hockey Night in Canada theme song. Um, but yeah, I remember. What's that deal with Bennington? Well, he, you mean his injury? Uh, no, he's kind of a, like a loose cannon rolling around the deck there, isn't he? Uh, yeah, he's he's a bit of an odd duck, but have you met many goalies that aren't a little on the odd side? No, because it's a lonely life back there. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. You're always the hero or you're always the goat. Never anywhere in between. Exactly. Yeah. All right, so we're going to finish the show. So get ready because yeah. you have an important part right at the end. Yeah. Are you ready, Bruce? I'm ready. Okay. So remember, remember, a Modeler's Life podcast is considered marginally adequate by six out of ten. Apparently, he wasn't ready, Bruce. Hmm? What? Uh, apparently, he wasn't ready. No, nah, he was. Uh, Wait the, a minute. I don't remember this. The gate swung open after the penalty. The gate he's, swung open. He's standing there I, going, huh? Well, what? Am I, can I go now? Yeah. At the end of the po- we're going to do this again. And you and it's six oh. out of you pick something. Oh, okay. And you did do it before. If you ever listen to any of our podcasts, does anybody on the who name me the four guys that are on the main uh, the the committee for this? Um, John Schindler, right? Bob Amsler, right? Jim Abels, yeah, and yours truly, Brad, Brad Joseph. Joseph. Do any number, of you, number fifty four on your program and number one in your hearts? Okay. Do any of you guys have any of you guys ever listened to this podcast? Yes. Okay. Uh, what so, about, I thought you were talking about happy rails, happy rails to you. No, this time we're just doing uh, the barn door thing. And everything. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, that was your first show. Now you're a regular. So remember, remember a modeler's life podcast is considered marginally adequate by six out of 10. Six out of how many? 10. Well, I got, I got uh, <laughs> 37. You're not listening. <laughs> you want me to give it a shot? No, I give I up want... on this thing. I got my it's algorithm. It's a question. Involved. It's a question. Listen well, to the question. The answer is yes. No, I'm going to do no. it again and listen to the question. A Modeler's Life podcast is considered marginally adequate by six out of ten modelers who are actually living.
Modeler's Life is sponsored by Because I Love Sushi, with seven convenient locations in the greater Busted Knuckle area. It's another Lincoln Homer. Was that so hard? No, no, it wasn't particularly uh, difficult. I was looking you know. for a hockey thing, actually, but okay. Yeah. Well, I could have come up with that too, but who knows? Yeah, guys whose guys whose face are going to get ground into the boards the next time they come down my side of the the ice. Guys who have been on the wrong side of too many hip checks. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> goalies who've seen too much river. Yeah, yeah. Goalies, yeah. goalies who saw too much. Of, are endless. Goalies yeah. who came seen up with too two much of Nazim of Kadri. Of yeah. There you go. Yeah. I did drop the I did drop the puck there tonight. I kind of uh, I I, I kind of cut the puck loose before center ice on that one for yeah. the icing call. Guys oh, well. that have, guys that have jabbed me one too many times with the, the with their stick. It's not the first mistake I made. All right. Well, that was pretty good. I think that went pretty well. It was, it was fun.